What I'd like to talk about today is um, uh, a project I've been lucky enough to work on, Project Loon, um, which is a Google X project, and I've been lucky enough to work with the Google X team as well. Um, I should say at the outset that I am not a scientist or a uh, software engineer, I'm a lawyer. So in, that, uh, in this project, they had to simplify quite a few of the words for me so I could understand. And they were very patient with my uh, lack of understanding of basic physics at certain points. So uh, bear with me if there are things that I'm um, explaining perhaps a little too, too simply. But before we get on to um, Project Loon itself, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, Google X and about um, moonshots. Whoops, let's go back. So, Google X, um, which uh, I'm sure Dave can speak uh, better than I, is a team of inventors and makers and engineers who want to make the world a better place um, and a radically better place uh, by inventing and launching audacious moonshot technology. So in this space, um, we can experiment, we can work on the next thing for Google. And this is the group that's developed driverless cars, which Dave will be talking about, Google Glass, which you may have been seeing being trialed in the US, and of course, Project Loon. What's also important to recognize is that Google X is looking at creating real businesses that will be valued by people who use our services and to be commercially viable. But early on, typically they're not focused on whether the business will make money so much, but more on creating value in the world. So that's saving lives, not just about profit. And that the money will flow, even though it may take a while. And, and a great example of this is search which presumably many of you have used, that came first, and AdWords came second. And that's, that's an important point. So at Google, we define a moonshot with three key elements, um, which are up here. And the first is to start with a huge problem, which is intractable, which affects millions or even billions of people. The second is to come up with a radical solution a product or service that almost sounds like science fiction. And then finally, you need technology breakthrough, which makes you believe it's just about possible to make the solution happen in the next five to 10 years. So what's the huge problem? Well, one of the huge problems today is that, as you know, two out of three people lack access to the internet. And for those that are online, one third of those are on slow connections. Now that is more than just missing out on cat videos. It means missing out on being able to run a micro multinational from anywhere in the world. It means missing out on new opportunities in health and education. And so what does the data tell us? Well, for every 10% increase in internet penetra penetration, a country's GDP growth rates increases by 1.4% a year. Geospatial technology has led to $4.9 billion in fuel savings. And for small businesses that increase their web engagement, they experience a 20% lift in their revenue. That's a 20% lift in revenue. So what's our next moonshot then in response to this? It is universal access. Our goal is to improve access globally by helping to connect people in rural and remote areas, helping to fill coverage gaps for areas that can't be served profitably by existing providers, and helping to rapidly connect people after disasters. Now, we're not claiming to solve the entire internet access problem. There is no single company or single technology that will do this. You still need equipment and the means to afford access, but we hope it's one step in helping fill the gaps in internet access around the world. So our attempt to do this, our radical solution, if you will, is called Project Loon. Uh, so what is it? So this is a, a balloon there. Project Loon is about bringing internet access to more people around the world through a network of high altitude balloons. 
It's experimental technology which uses balloons carried by the wind at altitudes twice as high as commercial planes to beam internet access to the ground at speeds similar to 3G or faster. Again, our focus here is on helping people in rural and remote areas, helping fill those coverage gaps. And no one company is going to solve all of this. So we're going to need lots of partners, each of whom knows the situation in their country far better than we ever could. So how does it work? There are three uh, key components to Project Loon. Firstly is a circle of balloon, like a mesh network. The second is the homes or businesses with internet antennas that will send and receive signals. And I'm going to call these receivers just for ease of use. And the third is base stations on the ground that receive the signal and then either through DSL or other technologies feed it back into the internet network. So these balloons float in the stratosphere twice as high as aeroplanes or the weather. They travel around the Earth using wind and can be steered by rising or descending to an altitude with winds moving in the desired direction. Unlike weather balloons, though, these are super pressure and they're designed to stay up for around 100 days or more. People connect using a receiver that is a special internet antenna attached to their building. And the signal also bounces from balloon to balloon and then back to, to Earth. Each balloon can provide connectivity to the ground of about 40 kilometers in diameter. And as I said, comparable to 3G speeds at the moment. And for balloon to balloon and balloon to ground communications, they use antennas equipped with specialized radio frequency technology. And currently, they use ISM bands 2.5 and 5.8 gigahertz that are available to everyone. So in this video that, that I'll play, um, Richard Duval, Google's chief scientist on the project, and Mike Cassidy, the project director, um, talk about the technology that's made this possible. Many people don't realize this, but the majority of the world is not connected to the internet. How do we get cost effective, inexpensive, and reliable connectivity to the remaining five or six billion people in the world who don't have it? Yeah, we can be up in an hour. Okay. Project Loon is the idea that we could create a network of high altitude balloons that float about 20 kilometers up. And through this network, we can give the internet to the entire world. Our balloons are these great big round things, about 15 meters in diameter. But you'd have to have a telescope if you wanted to see one up in the sky. So here's the surface of the planet. From here, right up to about 10 kilometers, this is where rain happens, this is where mountains are, and pretty much all aircraft fly down here. Now, here's our little balloon up here. This is right around 20 kilometers, actually in the stratosphere. And the stratosphere is different because we tend to have layers of wind that go in very particular directions. And by moving up and down through these different layers, we can steer. So by catching the right wind, we can keep the balloons together enough to give good coverage on the ground. We can sail with the winds and shape the waves and patterns of these balloons so that when one balloon leaves, another balloon is set to take its place. The balloons communicate with specialized internet antennas on the ground. So this antenna here points up at the sky and talks to this balloon. And each one of these balloons talks to their neighboring balloons and then back down to the ground station, which is connected to the local internet provider. What this does is it creates a network in the sky. Well, let's carry on then. We need to get that antenna off. Yeah. We've designed our radios and antennas specifically to receive signals from Project Loon only in order to achieve the high bandwidth over long distances involved. If we didn't filter out the other signals, the technology just wouldn't work. I got it. Actually, this will probably work. The balloons are completely solar powered, and we control them through Loon Mission Control. All right, I think your plan is great. Do the ascent on 46 and 47, set, try it like an hour after float. Yeah. 
Okay, we're gonna be off the ground in a couple minutes. Before we send them up, we talk to air traffic control. We let them know these balloons are on the way up so they know where they are. And before they come down, we also talk to air traffic control. Okay, and they're on a different one now. We can direct them to land in various collection points around the world in order to reuse and recycle their parts. Now, we have some ability to steer in general. However, in the stratosphere, most of the time, the winds actually flow from west to east. Because the winds generally circulate this way, we typically will have bands of our balloons that will be around the world at different latitudes. So if the balloons are circling around the bottom half of the world, eventually the balloon that's over South Africa will pass over South America. One, two, three. We're using the sunlight, we're using the wind, we're using all of these things to build this network in the sky. Project Loon is working to bring the technologies of access to everyone on the planet. Thanks, let's just move that on then. So, What were the technology breakthroughs we needed for this moonshot? I mean, each year, 70,000 weather balloons are launched. They have no tether. Most of them disintegrate, and you can't control them from the ground. So Project Loon is made possible by advances in engineering that make balloons controllable, long-lasting, and relatively inexpensive. And these breakthroughs have made it possible for balloons to be a viable communications platform. Now, the hard science breakthrough was making individual balloons controllable by adjusting their altitude so that they can travel on the winds going in the speed and the direction we want. And we want our balloons to be controllable for a very long time, as long as the balloon flies. And we're aiming, as I said, for over 100 days if we can. So we developed a way to move the balloon up and down that uses simply wind and solar power. And with this technology, we can actually make altitude changes as long as the balloon flies. The second major technology breakthrough related to planning. So to ensure that the fleet stays well distributed so that there aren't gaps in coverage on the ground, we had to solve a huge planning problem. Given a whole bunch of balloons in different locations in the sky, experiencing different winds, we had to come up with a plan so that in a few hours, days, or weeks, the balloons will be in the right place at the right time and provide the right coverage that we need. I mean, if there were just one or two balloons, a person could have probably done that. But when you have dozens or thousands, it makes for a hard planning problem. Fortunately, we have smart computer scientists and, and other scientists and a lot of computing power. So we've combined that with data and weather predictions from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration about each balloon's location and status. And we've built software that can automatically create flight plans that stretch for days and weeks into the future. So once you've planned and simulated flights, you also need to launch, uh, track, monitor, and even uh, control the balloons in real time. So we developed mission control to display the balloon's trajectories and predicted paths, along with reports on the balloon's health and state. And you'll see uh, in, in this slide that you can see the data perhaps in the uh, top uh, left of the screen or your right. Uh, they're showing altitude, ascent rate, pressure, and temperature, all of which are critical and displayed in real time. The bottom left shows the coverage offered by the balloon. And you'll see increases in diameter as the balloon ascends. Attached to the balloons, are a container of electronic equipment, uh, which includes circuit boards, radios, uh, and antennas, both for balloon and ground-to-balloon communications. 
as well as some batteries and small motors. Finally, as you may have seen in, in the video, that's uh, the antenna on your home or your workplace that connects up. And in essence, um, these are low power, unlicensed spectrum radio. Each receiver is mounted to the side of a home or business. And so when you make a request on your web page, uh, for a web page on, on your computer, it will send a message to that receiver that will go up to a balloon. A balloon will connect to another balloon that will then come down, connect to a base station, and go back into the internet. So, finally, as you may know, um, uh, we, a few weeks ago, launched this in Christchurch. This was a global launch that uh, Google X uh, made in New Zealand, which was uh, relatively rare to be outside the US. And um, it went really well. 30 balloons were flown uh, in a few batches over the course of a week, and we tested quite a few different things. Uh, basic launch procedures, um, providing an internet connection to the ground, um, which was obviously pretty important uh, with the strength that we want, and controlling the descent and managing the recovery of balloons, which is important now. At present, the, the team is back in the US. They're making a number of improvements to the balloon. They do expect to be back in New Zealand later this year, and then also to begin trials in several other nations in the Southern Hemisphere in 2014. So that's all I'd like to say at the moment. Um, if you'd like to find out more information, there is more online uh, on the website, on YouTube, and on the G Plus page. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.